Welcome. In this section, we're going to take a high-level review of system parameters. The goal here is to introduce important parameters that you should fully understand before going on to more complex optical design topics. So the seven parameters we're going to be looking at are working distance, field of view, sensor size, resolution, depth of field, primary magnification, and F number. By the end of this section, you should have a qualitative understanding of all of these parameters and some idea about how some of them will relate to each other. So jumping right in, working distance is the distance from the lens to the object under inspection. Some systems, such as microscopes, are designed to work at a specific working distance, so your object will always be the same distance from the lens whereas other systems, such as a traditional photography camera, are designed to be adjustable so you can use it at many different working distances. Field of view describes the area that is imaged by the optical system. The field of view is not always the same in every dimension. In fact, it's usually not. The vertical field of view and the horizontal field of view have different magnitudes, which are related by the aspect ratio. Lens parameters are generally given in the horizontal field of view. So if you then want to figure out your vertical field of view parameters, that's where the aspect ratio can convert from one to the other. Angular field of view is another common way to designate what the field of view is, and it is given by the angle between the rays coming from opposite sides of the field of view. Um, so if we were to look at this image here, this is my field of view then rays coming from opposite sides have some angle labeled theta here between them, which is the angular field of view. It's common for field of view to be given as half angular field of view, so you should make sure you know which is being specified to avoid a factor two error. The field of view and the angular field of view can be related using some trigonometry uh, with this line drawn directly from the lens to the field of view, we form a right triangle. So the tangent then of the half angular field of view is equal to the field of, field of view divided by two times the working distance. So we can see that as the working distance changes for a set angular field of view, the field of view will change in size. The closer the object gets, the smaller the field of view. Sensor size is the size of the component that is actively collecting the light that's being focused by the optical system. The sensor is often one of the more expensive components in the camera, so it is important to optimize what you're doing with your sensor to get your best quality images. There are a, a wide variety of sensor sizes. They can come from as small as two millimeters up to as large as 90 millimeters. You want to make sure you're maximizing what you can get out of the sensor. So here are some examples here. Let's say we have an object and we're imaging it with a lens and we want to place a sensor in our system. If the sensor is too small, then much of the light that is being focused by the lens is going to miss the sensor entirely and we're not recording that part of our object. If our sensor is too large, like on the bottom here, we're collecting all of the light that makes it through the optical system but a large portion of our sensor is not being used. This middle case here is the optimal case where the light collected by this uh, system makes maximal use of the sensor area. Next up, resolution is a measurement of an imaging system's ability to reproduce the details on an object. The type of resolution you can get is influenced by a number of factors from the lighting used to the pixel size on the sensor and the capabilities of the object. So depending on the qualities of each of these things, a different thing may be limiting the resolution you're able to get in your system. The easiest to uh, quantify is the resolution that's limited by the sensor. So if we look at the number of horizontal or vertical pixels on a sensor, we divide that into the size of an object, it will indicate how much space each pixel covers on the object and it can be used to estimate resolution. So for example, if we have a thousand pixels, 
and we are imaging an object that is one meter tall, then each pixel covers 0.1 centimeters on the object, and you are never going to get resolution that is better than that because you can't have multiple pieces of information on a single pixel. However, it is a little more complicated than that because just because information is on two different pixels doesn't mean that information is distinguishable. So if we look at this case here, this is what we call a line pair. So you have two dark pixels separated by a light area. And in this imaging system here, the information from each of these dark squares ends up on adjacent pixels. However, these are not resolved because just because the information is on different pixels doesn't mean we can tell where one starts and one stops. We need some separation between them. So over on the right here, we have an example where there is a larger white gap between the line pair. And so the information ends up on separate pixels with another pixel in between them, which is white, which means this information is resolved. So line pairs is a common way to specify the resolution of an optical system, essentially saying what is the spacing of two dark pixels that we can resolve. Now it's a little more complicated than just saying black and white because pixels come in grayscale. So instead of black, white, black, what we really end up with is dark, less dark, more dark. So it, depending on what that contrast is, we can either say they are resolved or not. Depth of field is a measure of the image quality produced by stationary lens for objects at different working distances. So what range of distances from the lens will you still be able to produce a quality image? We should note that depth of field doesn't really have any meaning except in context of a specific resolution. So for example, if we look at these blocks here, we can see they're getting more and more out of focus as they get further away from the lens. But what we consider a sufficiently good focus depends on the application. Typically, we use these things called performance curves of a lens to re relate the contrast to the depth of field. And a 15% to 20% contrast is the minimum contrast for acceptable image quality. Again, this is just a, a bar that's commonly used, and it will depend on your application for what you consider a sufficient contrast. So these are some examples of performance curves. Don't worry too much about the details. Just know that they represent the contrast that is given by the optical system for different working distances. And the depth of field is the range of working distances where we get at least a 20% contrast. And here we have a comparison for two performance curves for identical optical systems, except that they have different focal lengths for the lenses. So we can see that for the shorter focal length, the 200 millimeter focus, the depth of field that is achievable is less than it is for the 500 millimeter focus. So what depth of field you can get depends on the optics that are in your system. The primary magnification of a lens is defined as the ratio between the sensor size and the field of view. So essentially this is telling you if you map your pixel size onto your object, how much area on the object will it take up. So it's very much related to the resolution that's being limited by pixel size. In fact, we can say our object space resolution is the pixel size over the primary magnification of the system. F number, pronounced F number and written as F backslash pound sign or number sign, is the ratio of the effective focal length of the lens to the effective aperture diameter. Essentially, it's a measure of how much light is allowed through the system. So if you have a larger aperture, you have a smaller F number. And if you have a smaller aperture, letting less light through, you have a larger F number. And the F number of three, for example, would be represented with the notation F backslash three. F number is related to a lot of different parameters. 
Uh, in particular, your depth of field will change with your F number. So if we consider this image below, let's say we have a low F number, which means a large aperture, it means light is able to get into your camera from a wide variety of angles. And this limits the depth of field that you're able to see. Whereas if you have a small aperture or a high F number, the light's only able to get in in a smaller range of angles, so a smaller region of the lens. This gives you a larger depth of field. These are sometimes called slow and fast imaging systems because a large aperture lets a lot of light in, so a shorter exposure time gets the same amount of photons into your system, whereas a smaller aperture lets less light in and takes a longer exposure time. Again, we can look at these performance curves for different lenses that have identical parameters but different F numbers. And what we can see is that the contrast, to get a 20% contrast, there is a smaller range of working distances for the smaller F number or larger aperture. And for the larger F number or smaller aperture, the depth of field is larger. So in summary, we have these seven parameters, the working distance, field of view, sensor size, resolution, depth of field, primary magnification, and F number. And hopefully you have an idea of what all of these mean and how some of them are qualitatively related to each other. We'll be going in more depth into various parameters later in the course. This has been a high-level review of system parameters. Thank you for watching.